Hello and good day to all of you. So in this video lecture, we are going to learn about the Sun Sports events, which has been happened in last centuries, and also we look at how we can observe the Sun Sports and their application. So before starting the lecture, so we have some learning objective for this piece of lecture. So the first learning outcome of this lecture is to learn and understand the Sun Sports and their observation and also application and also we will get to know about the events of the higher sunspot and also the terms which use for sunspots in the sun so before starting the sunspots so we need to get to understand what are the sunspots and when they are higher and they are lower so these sunspots are actually related to the solar cycle so as mentioned in the previous lecture as well so every year or so the sun magnetic field completely flip so the north and south pole flip together in every 11 year so this is the time when they are going to flip so let's say in 2010 so this was the north pole then once it's flipping in the 11 year, so 2020 it will be coming toward the another uh, north and south pole. So during the time when they are flipping at this stage, it's a higher sunspot activities happening. So that is the reason to let you know what's the relation of solar cycle and also the sunspot activity. So there is two terms which use for solar maximum and solar minimum. So the sunspot activity cycles about every 11 years and the point of higher sunspot activities during this cycle is known as solar maximum. So at this time on the right side so you can see the higher sunspot activity so you can observe a lot of number of sunspots on the surface of the sun. But when there is a less sunspot activities, then obviously you will not be able to see a number of sunspots on the surface of the sun. So at the start of the cycles, I mean, as I mentioned in the previous figure, let's say in 2010, it was started. So the sunspot tends to appear the higher latitude and then moves toward the equator. So this higher latitude is from here on the top and move toward the equator uh, and the cycle approaches the maximum is called the sporer law. So it can be explained by the sporer law. So we are not going into details of this law, but just to observe that when the sunspots are maximum and minimums during the cycle. So there, there was a time, uh, it was actually in 17th century. So during that time, there was a very less amount of sunspot activity on the surface of the sun. So that was the cause of the time in 17th century. It was very cold in the northern region of the world. So you can see this figure actually explain how the temperature and the temperature was affected or the temperature dropped down a lot at the North Pool in the Europe and all these areas. Now we look at the events of the sunspots. So the first event which I'm going to discuss is about the Carrington event. So this was happened in 1st to 2nd September in 1859 during the solar cycle 10. So so that was the time there was most intense geomagnetic storm in the recorded history and you can see this figure so this actually explained the geomagnetic storm which is hitting to the surface of the earth and it created a strong auroral display that were reported globally and cause sparking and even the fire in multiple telegraphic stations and not only this one but it also has interrupted electrical telegraph services and caused 
visible aurora borealis as far south as Havana, Hawaii. And also in the room with a similar activity in the south southern hemisphere as well. And the second event which was happened in recently, which was in 2003, November 2003, at 7 or 1929 UTC time. And you can see from this figure, so actually this is the most powerful flare which was observed by the satellite instrument which was during that time in 2003. So this was actually disrupted the transmission between the satellite and the communication centers for 11 minutes. So there was no communication between the satellites and this communication center. So that was the important event which was recently observed because of the sunspots activities. So now we look at the uh, some terms of the sunspots, how we can explain the sunspots. <clears throat> so the first term is umbra. So umbra is actually the inner surface or the inner part, which is mostly the darker portion of the sunspots. And it's re relatively has the cooler region. I mean, the temperature is low rather than the other part of the region. So normally the temperature of this umbra is 37, 3700 Kelvin. And the second term is penumbra. So in penumbra, it's the outer surface or the outer portion of the sunspots, which is relatively a lighter to darker region, which is shown like this one. And the third term, which is called the pores, and pores are actually the small sunspots. So you can see over here, these are actually the small sunspot and does not have penumbra. So it's actually only contain the umbra like this one. So these, these are actually in uh, 2500 kilometer of course and lighter than the sunspots umbra. So these are the three terms which normally can explain a sunspot. So now we look at the observation of the sunspot. So sunspots are observed with the land-based solar telescope as well as one on the earth orbiting satellite so these are two two things which we can observe and uh, normally these telescopes use the filtration and the projection techniques from here and additionally additionally they have a lot of filters and cameras of the various type inside this in inside these telescopes and obviously there is some specialized tools such as spectroscope and spectroheliscope are used to examine the sunspots in the area of the sunspots so obviously we cannot look directly so you can see here this is one of the picture so from here they actually looking at this uh, solar eclipse so this part is toward the sun and over here you can see this solar eclipse can be observed on the sheet of the paper so as mentioned, you, you cannot look at directly to the sun. So if you're looking at directly at the sun with the naked eye, which probably damage your vision. So for that purpose, obviously there is a lot of designs of the telescopes. So which uses the project projected image or the directly through the appropriate protective filters, which is installed inside this telescope and the small section of every dark filter glass such as number 14 welder glass are sometimes implied in letter capacity so you can see this is actually the telescopes so this is a vision from here you can look at the sun and this is toward the sun and this is a big picture of this one and with the example of the person he is looking at the sun so this is toward the sun and he's not actually looking directly to the sun so there is a lot of filters which comes and bring the image of the sun to this place and that can be observed by the human eyes 
So this is a close picture of the sunspot which is used the ultraviolet lights and it was taken from the spacecraft trace. So you can see a lot of things are happening here. So you can observe this is a region where a lot of magnetic storms and activities, hot and cool activities are being happens at this place. So now we look at the application of the sunspots. So what are the application of the sunspots? So as I mentioned, uh, uh, these sunspots are caused by the magnetic change in the sun pools. So due to their link to other kind of solar activity, sunspots can be used to break the space weather. Obviously, then when there is a magnetic storm and there is a lot of sunspot activity, high magnetic storm, then obviously we can look at the space weather. So, these space weather can be used to predict the condition of the short wave with radio wave propagations and also the satellite communication. So, obviously, when we are sending some uh, space exploration satellites, the communication system, and also it's related to the aviation and electric powers and also some sort of GPS and also we can observe during this sunspots aurora boreals on the northern hemispheres. So this is the first application and also we have another application which is called the global temperature on the earth. So there was a geologist uh, named as Don Easterbrook and actually he claims that there is a cause and effect of relationship between the sunspots activities and the major change in the global temperature on the earth. So from this figure uh, on the right side of the this slide, so you can look at, so this is actually a long term figures which explained 200 centuries almost here. Yeah. 1862 to 2000, 2000 maybe more than that and so you can see the curve of the temperature which is on the red colors and this this is the average actually temperature curve and over here we, we can see the sun spots which how many number of sun spots we have so if you look and compare these sun spots so from here these was the 50 sun spots then gradually it's going down so then you can observe the temperature is also going down but when the temperature the sun spots are be, being higher here so you can see the temperature is becoming higher as well but at this region uh, like in this century it does the temperature is still going higher so it he stated that the cumulative number and number of activities is making the sun more hotter than it was yesterday or maybe in the previous time so that's why when we have the cumulative sunspot activities so it's making the rise of the temperature of the sun and also obviously when the temperature is rising on the sun then obviously it will be affecting the temperature of the earth so that's the the case he presented and it actually turns to the global warming and the sunspot activities so relating these two together so now we look at the sun death so what do you think when the sun going to die so obviously when the sun was formed which was about 4.6 billion years ago and it was actually 30 percent dimmer than it is today or at present so at the time of the next 4.8 billion years the sun will be about 67 percent brighter than it is today so when it going to die obviously when it's becoming more brighter more brighter i mean obviously when there is a lot of activities on the sun and magnetic storms probably so that makes the death of the sun so you can comment on the uh, section that when do you think the sun is going to die? Okay, with that's all. Thank you so much and I hope you have learned something about the sunspots and what is the application of the sunspot for our human life. Okay, thank you so much and have a good day.